What questions have we got? What did people ask? <laughs> we we actually had a lot of questions. Like there was a lot of questions, right? Um, and a lot of them uh, were sort of similar ones, uh, yeah. which makes sense. And so I bundled I bundled them together, sort of thing. Love but I it. guess we start every episode of the podcast by asking what your first ever creative memory was. Uh, <laughs> Baby Georgia Mac. Oh, uh, like I used to like write so like little songs and stuff when I was like a kid, like 10 years old. And I remember like one of the first songs I wrote was called Broken Mirrors. And it was like, it like, it went like, there's a little girl staring back at me on the other side of the wall. When I walk away, she doesn't follow me. Is she really there at all? Uh, like, you, how just, old were you when you like wrote 10. that? Like 10. How? How is I that know. like, you I, could do I, that like, now. I remember like coming up with it when I was like, um, we were like in the car. Cause like how, like I grew up, like mom would go to work and she'd get us up and get us ready for school. And then dad would go get a coffee at 9am. He'd roll out of bed at like 8.45, go get a coffee at 9am. And I remember like in the car, cause it was school holidays. And I remember going in the car with dad to like get a coffee. And I just remember coming up with that in the car. Just like that. Just like that. That's so it's like, a more like, like melody, obviously. Yeah, you like know, you had it. some, like a combination of like words and a melody will come to me and like I'll never forget like how it came to me. Like I wrote um, like I'll keep growing my hair out from keep growing in the shower at one of my old houses and it just came to me. And I remember writing like say girl in Indiana. I remember writing that as I was driving past Franco Cozzo coming home. Um, yeah, things just like come to me. And I remember writing like um, the opener, like da -na 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 I remember writing that um, in my friend's house in Sydney. Things just like come to me from the universe. I don't come up with them, they just come to me. And then I like, I'm like this vessel for the universe to use to like channel some shit. So I guess in all those ones that you mentioned, mainly it's like lyrics first then. Like, it's like a combination. It's gotta be a combination. Like I can't write poetry. Like I can't sit down and like write a beautiful poem. I can't do it. It's shit. But don't you think your lyrics can read like that anyway? Yeah, they like they can, but I can't write them like normal, like like a normal person. Like it's got to be like with the music. Um, yeah. So yeah, a lyric and music combination will just like come to me, and then I just like build from that. Yeah. Okay. So you were like ten years old writing broken broken mirrors, and. Did you go, oh, at this stage, was it kind of one of those things you were just doing for fun? Or did you go, I want to, like, I want to be on a stage. I want, like, you know, I want to express myself in this way. I wanted to be, like, pink. Like, oh, I yeah. wanted to be, like, stadium. Well, I've never seen you on a trapeze. Like, just just <laughs> wait. Just wait. My next solo <laughs> album. Um, stadium tour, trapeze, lights, tiny like diamante color covered outfit yeah um, flamethrowers all that stuff yeah 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 yeah. <laughs> like private function um yeah, exactly um i always wanted to be a pop star like i was like when i grew up i want to be like a singer and i want to you know write songs and perform them and you know wow people and i don't know why and I think that like, that's just, I feel like there's like two parts of me. One that's like very like self-indulgent and one part that wants to like dedicate my life to helping people. And I think I'm at like a good balance right now where I'm like working as a nurse and also rocking out. Yeah. And I guess like there's a lot of lyrics on on the first album as well, the first Camp Cope album that sort of referenced directly the nursing stuff. Yeah, because I um, like I wrote like flesh and electricity like on my like nursing placement. 
on like my last nursing placement. Is that like from, I guess, like a lot of those lyrics are very sort of, you know, energy based, I guess. Did, is that sort of like you, you see these people and they're in these sort of vulnerable states um, and, you know, does that sort of simplify that the, you know, the creation of the, the essence of the song sort of thing, because like when, you know, when you see someone and they're struggling and you, you have the emotion in it, yeah. bring something out, it's sort of like, does it ride it a little bit easier in I, those I, sort of vulnerable situations? I don't really know how to answer that, but like, I saw a clairvoyant the other week. I don't know why. Don't, don't ask me why. I was just like, I maybe I was like, I want to see a clairvoyant. So I saw a clairvoyant and she was like, you work in the medical profession and you help these sick people because you need to know that you haven't hurt them. And I was so like, she knew that she got it right. Yeah. Isn't that fucking weird? Like, well, you picked a good one. Yeah. <laughs> like, I just found that CV. like, I need to help them because it, it, I need to know that I didn't hurt them. Um, that's a that's a powerful statement. People I know. would spend a lot of money on therapy to get that. <laughs> I know. I know. Okay, um, so what else did you like what else pull came out of the clairvoyant reading? Oh my god. And um fuck, I've recorded the whole thing and like tried to listen back to it and I was like, this is fucking cooked. Um but she like helped me like meditate and then I like went up out of my body and I was above a stadium, a stadium full of people who loved yeah. me. And I saw my dad and we were like floating on these clouds. And in my arm, I had my daughter. Like I don't have a daughter, but I in my arm, I was holding my daughter and I was introducing her to my dad and introducing my dad to my daughter. And, being and this like, is in the meditation. Yeah. This is like a vision that I had above the clouds, above this stadium. I, it was my dad and I was introducing him to my daughter. I was like, this is grandpa. And wow. I know, isn't that fucked? It was fucked. It was so fucked so up. So you were like almost like lucid dreaming. Yeah, know, it was the fucking weirdest thing. And that's why I'm kind of grateful for that. Like, that's why I'm like, oh, did I just get rolled? By some lady who was just telling well, me what I wanted to hear. But she then wasn't I had wrong. that weird, like, experience of, like, d like uh, introducing, like, my dead father to my daughter who's not born yet, maybe. Like, it was just this really weird, like, me connecting these two, like, just really fucking weird, Matt. Like, and. <laughs> So you so can't I'm like... grateful for that. I'm grateful <laughs> for that. It was so weird. So there's going to be some trippy stuff that you write next. <laughs> Maybe. I actually like, I haven't, no, I have written one song. Let me just go and like look at the lyrics so I can kind of remember. You can read it like a poem. Yeah, I'll read it to you like a poem. I don't know where it is. And I've then you can, um, really we can it. erase the thing where you said that you're not good at, you can't write poetry. I can't write poetry. I remember one of my like earlier songs was like, I can never write poetry, so I try to tell the truth. But, um, that was like, like an old G Mac lyric. But so like you must be sitting on just like pads of stuff. Like I've just got... things you could use that other people would be like, Man, if I could write that, I'd be I'd be sorted. Yeah, like I've got like songs that I've just like written and then just forgotten. Like they're gone forever. Does that like, bother you? No, because there's nothing I can do about it. It doesn't bother me. I've like, I've got no control over it. So I'm just like, eh, whatever. That's how I feel about most things in life, you know? Like if I can't control it, why it like, why get, why worry about it? Doesn't matter. Yeah. Doesn't matter. Yeah, I can understand that. I just think it would be like, I guess like when, when you can, you know, you can create something else, I guess yeah. it's the same as like, I had a hard drive crash and I lost so many print resolution photos. And I'm yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I can go back and, and you know, do more tours and create it. Mm. But if I took and a photo that a was better. a fluke, you'd, yeah. you'd hope so. But, um, you know, like you just know that there's more opportunities to do it. Whereas if you fluked it 
if you somehow made a, a photo or a song and that's what you know you didn't do by trade it wouldn't mm. matter so much because you'd be yeah. like you'd, you'd be freaking out yeah you'd be like oh shit I, I lost my uh proof that i can do this if i try whereas yeah. we can probably go create something else yeah i just like i try not to let it bother me because i feel like there's you know there's billions of fucking people in the world someone's got to come up with that exact same thing surely like it doesn't do you ever it doesn't worry matter. yeah like i right. feel like i expressed myself i did what i needed to do at the time and if i don't like you know capitalize off it that's fine like that doesn't matter that's like not the point but do you like in that vein do you worry sometimes the a song you're coming up with is subconsciously the same as something that exists out there or do you just not worry too much oh about that? Oh my God. Like I worry about it like quite a bit. I'm like, have I just like ripped off something that I heard and I'm just, you know, but like, it's like everything's been written. Everything's been done. Everything is just a, you know, nothing's original anymore. You can't be like, everything's already been done. So we're all just kind of ripping each other off, but that's okay. That's just fucking art. Like people make collages out of other people's art and that collage is still art and it still has value and meaning. And, you know, I think it's kind of the same way with like songs and like a lot of songs like rip off like old songs now, like, um, you know, the Miley Cyrus song prisoner, how it goes prisoner, prisoner, prisoner. And it yeah. sounds exactly like let's get physical, physical. It's like, oh, it does. Yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't yeah. even think about that. I know. And this Dua Lipa song that goes, da, 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 da. And it's like, oh, that's yeah. a fucking that's in excess life. song. Like, yeah. Oh, how many of these are you sitting on? <laughs> I know. <laughs> Everything's a rip of fucking everything. But it's like, that Dua Lipa song's still good. That Miley Cyrus song's still good. Like, it's just fucking, like, I don't know. I don't think people have kind of claim over, you can't, I don't know. You can't have claim over, like, shit like that. Like, get over it a bit. Everyone's just yeah. trying to make art. Like, let them. It's how people express themselves. I'm not, like, a purist about it or whatever. Well, I guess, like, that leads to a question that I've been curious about. And and this, like, the, the exciting thing for the podcast for me is to have these discussions with a friend that yeah. we just don't bother having these kind of chats because it's no, kind of I like know. we're just talking about random stuff and we don't, like, talk too much about the DNA behind stuff. But one of the things, like, if you're writing, I guess, what's the difference between a Camp Cope song that's like song for Charlie or, you know, uh, so those closing tracks versus yeah. like cold summer or, you know, something that's a G Mac song. That's still just you with the guitar. Like how do you uh, know which is which? Well, I kind of don't like, it just kind of happens. Like when we had the first camp cope album, I kind of didn't really have that many songs. So I was just like, yeah, let's just pull whatever on the album. And it's like song for Charlie couldn't have been with anyone. Like it couldn't have been done with anyone else. You know, but I have thought about like, I have like this idea in my head of it being a full band song eventually, and maybe like cutting down the verses, making it shorter. And, um, but that has just hasn't happened yet. Um, and then Cold Summer, I don't know, there's some songs that I'm just like, nah, like some songs that can't, like, I can kind of like feel when some, like, now in my life, I couldn't before, but now in my life, I like, feel more confident in like my solo abilities. Like I feel good about what I'm producing. I feel like I can produce things myself in a really fun and cool way that like, now I can kind of tell the difference a bit more between like Camp Cope songs and GMAC songs. Like they're both kind of like, I feel like they could, I don't know, maybe not so much with Pleaser. Like Pleaser is like just its own little thing. And there's, yeah, there's just some songs that I'm just like, no, nah, I want like synths on this song and I want it to sound a certain way. And I just want to like, you know, be able to be self-sustainable. And then there's some songs that are like, fuck, I don't even know, Matt. Like, I don't even know how I, like, you just like, you can kind of feel like I've got this like one song that I've written, first song that I've written since um, Singing Clairvoyant. 
and I'm like, is that a Camp Cope song? Is that a GMAC song? I guess like, try it with Camp Cope. If it doesn't work with Camp Cope, then it's it's a GMAC song. Or maybe I just won't ever release it. Maybe I just have it. But you know, I like I like putting my art out into the world. Like that's a nice thing to do. Like. So I'm just yeah, looking at the like, lyrics. It's courageous too. Yeah. Can you do you want to give us a sample or you want to okay. squirrel them away? I'll read out some of the lyrics. Okay. Yeah, please. Um, I used to walk around the record store. You know, I don't really like to do that no more. What does that mean? I don't know. Well, I haven't seen you in a record <laughs> store for some time, but I also haven't seen you in person for some time. I know. Either. <laughs> but also I just so like it could be I, true. I used to be so passionate about music and records. Like I've got so many records, but I just have them and I've just been like giving them away and selling them and because i'm like oh really you're just offloading them is that like a yeah chase, you're trying to be a minimalist or i think i am i just like ripped out half my wardrobe and i'm giving it i took some to um there's these people who um run on monday nights they do it's called reach out in the inner west and it's pretty much just like giving free food and free clothes to people who need it and so I took them a bunch of like old big jackets that I had, stuff that could be warm because it's getting a bit colder now. Yeah. And I'm going to give the rest to like uh, Indigenous Women's Refuge. Oh, that's awesome. Because I'm like, I can't be bothered like selling, I can't be bothered selling shit online. I'm just, just give it away. Like I yeah, can afford, so I can like afford to give it away. Like I don't, I don't give a fuck. It's just stuff. Like I've kind of, I stopped being like so sentimental about a lot of things maybe yeah. songs as well um yeah well i guess that's like you just letting it go did you have another lyric there yeah. you were about yeah, to yeah. read okay hear me, um, hear me. i kind of liked it when they would speculate was i a topless waitress or a meter maid because <laughs> you know i feel like like i used to get kind of shitty at people on the internet like assuming things about me you know, and people assume a lot about me. And like, that's partially like my fault. Or not, it's not like a fault, but like, it's like, you know, I'm very like, I put myself online. I put on like, sometimes I do like dumb shit and put it on the internet and you know, I've, you know. Well, I've, what's the know. biggest misconception about you? I don't know. I don't well, know. What do you see like I more than anything and you're like, like, that's not true. Like a man hating whatever. Like I do hate men. Well, we've worked together for a long time, so yeah. I know that's not like a <laughs> like I hate men as like a whole. The individuals, yeah. like that's different. Like it's like different with you and different with like people I've seen before and you know, my friends. And like I know like obviously I'm like I'm not like don't hate all men but like i hate all men you know yeah and it's the By same default. with all cops are bastards correct right? like correct. you know like surely there's a few cops that are good but nine times out of ten yeah it's like fuck the cops fuck the whole institution of policing like it's fuck. but if you put all racist. those footnotes in it it just takes yeah, it's away like, it from ta it, the... yeah and it makes people feel like they're like exempt from it so they don't have to work on themselves like was there ever a you time know. where you cared about that whole sort of the extreme writing you off as this man-hating person where you felt like it actually mattered to correct it? Or were you just like, nah, you don't get it. That's just how it is. I feel like I've just kind of always been that way, like outwardly, but inwardly I'm like, oh my God, one person on the internet hates me. What have I done? Like, how do I make this one person like me? Like, I feel like I secretly am like that a bit sometimes. But then like, there's like this other part of me that I'm just like, who gives a fuck? Like, you're not gonna please everyone. No one's gonna like you. If you liked, if everyone liked you, like you have to be the most fucking plain person on earth, you know, like. Uh, yeah, you, no one's you gonna, can't not please everyone's everyone. Gonna like you. Yeah, so. Yeah, I think. I think it's like, and I've, I've always known, you know, who you are mm. uh, at a very like balanced sort of way, but it's like frustrated me at times because of how wrong people can be or this like extreme yeah. because they, they see you as a, I don't know, like 
feel like when someone's talking to me about you, they're like, oh, you, you know, you're friends with Georgia. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. It's like, oh, is she, um, is she like really angry? And it's yeah. Like, no, not like, at all. Like she laughs about fart jokes and stuff like, you know, and, like I and sometimes like. No, oh, sorry. No, you, you keep going. You keep going. Oh, I was just going to say, I just remember like a few times where you were like really angry about something mm. and I'm like, nah, man, like that's, I don't think it's like that. And you were like, huh, maybe it's not. But people expect this character of you to go like, well, she would have beheaded you. Yeah. You like I think her. And I'm like, not really. Like, I think that I used to be like that. I think that I've like, definitely like, like in the, in the last like few years, like especially, and even like, you know, like, I feel like I'm not the same person I was like, you know, like a month ago, you know, like I feel like I'm constantly learning and changing and like forgive, like being like deeply forgiving of things. And like, like I used, I, yeah, like I used to be really angry and I used to like, you know, like but say, I saw a say productive things, side of that anger. Yeah. Like some, like sometimes it wasn't like, sometimes I was just playing in the wrong and like, that's okay. And I think that's like admitting that that's like, like that kind of like makes it okay because I'm like still learning, you know, like we're all still learning. No one knows everything. Like, and I, like, I'm definitely like learning, like learning while people watch me learn and that can kind of be hard sometimes. But at the same time, it's like, I'm lucky to like, have other people's opinions and have other people like hold me accountable for things and have other people like correct me when I'm wrong because they also see that, you know, everyone can grow and everyone can learn from stuff and like people don't learn when, and that was like a really big, okay. A really big mistake that I made was like getting angry at people and getting, getting mad. And like, people don't learn if you're screaming in their face, you know, sometimes they do, but like, it's not a, like sometimes I think it's not like a very kind or productive thing to do. And so I think definitely in the last like few years, I've become more like calm and like quiet. And like when some like, you know, like something happens, like, like this dude I know like shared a picture of this dude who's like abused people. And so instead of like calling him out and shit like that, as I feel like I probably would have done a few years ago, I just messaged him being like, hey, like this isn't your fault at all. Like you didn't know this. Like this is just what happened. Like this doesn't make you a bad person because you shared a picture of him, blah, 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 all that kind of stuff. But I just had this really like nice conversation with this person about it. And they were like, thanks so much for letting me know. Like I definitely will blah, 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 you know, all that kind of stuff. And yeah, I feel like at this point in my life, I'm more like accepting of people. And, you know, I try to like see the good in people, even like the, you know, like the worst things that have happened. Like I'm still like, I still like hold on to that hope that, you know, people can change and people can be better because no one wants to be a, no one wants to be bad. You know, no one wants to be like mean all the time and unhappy because I feel like that just kind of weighs you down, you know? Sorry. I'm just, kind of, I'm just like talking. No, I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, that's great. Well, you're the guest. So, you know, you should be doing the talking, Thank but you. it's interesting. You see, it's interesting that, you know, if I'm to contrast it just for entertainment's sake, it's interesting because how you see yourself now is how I've always perceived you to be. Matt, oh my God, stop it. Um, so I'm glad, like I'm glad you can see you know, yourself as, as the introvert, like introspective person that I've known you to be. Whereas, and that's one of the things that really frustrates me about being your friend is these people that just see an entertainment side of it, Yeah. which not to say that it's not real, all the things that you do, but they see 2% of you 
Yeah. And they think that that is 100% of you. And it's just not not the case. Yeah. And like, even like hearing that now, like that doesn't bother me. Like that, and that, it, and cause it's like, you know, I can't, I can't control how they think. Oh my God, the street lights just went out. Isn't that weird? Doesn't there's matter. blackouts going there's blackouts going up here too maybe it's like a really strange like someone yeah. who has like more electricity in their body than and like a regular person might have just walked past or something you know things like that <laughs> next happen. man yeah like <laughs> a ghost an alien i don't know um so uh like that's yeah, that, a misconception that kind of, of stuff, you it doesn't what bother about me it doesn't bother me anymore well what about misconception of the music industry as a whole Ugh. The music industry is fake and gross and everything's fucking rigged. Everything's rigged and racist and fucking horrible. Like, you know, like The Weeknd, The Weeknd who wrote yeah. fucking Blinding Lights, like the best song fucking ever that's still on like the top 10 of the world. Like that didn't even get nominated for a fucking Grammy. What yeah, the fuck? I'm glad he and took a stand his, against that. And then his Super Bowl performance, which was incredible like i've watched that like three or four times just like eyes like glued to the screen being like oh my fucking god this is the most incredible performance i've ever seen that they're just ignoring him it's fucked it's fucked and like you know the music industry doesn't really like camp cope and that's because like we like kind of like see through it a bit i guess like i don't want to i don't want to be i don't want to live off music like i don't want to be part of the music industry like i don't want it like uh like my neighbor just walked in had to wave to him um oh yeah of course like, that's friendly neighborhood behavior yeah he's the best we became really good friends over lockdown we were like sharing like weed edibles with each other <laughs> yeah really we gotta nice. keep them keep them close <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, well i guess in that vein right like um i jotted down some lyrics that i found interesting hmm. today is you said, um, at least the devil pays me, at least he pays me well. That got me thinking, like, I understand the context of the song, right? But if we apply that to the music industry, how do you know when it's worth playing within the parameters of the cage that people do versus like, it's just not worth playing at all because there's nothing to gain? Dude, that song is actually about the music industry. Is it? Kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I had that like conversation with someone, uh, you know, I was like, this whole thing, I was like, that place or whatever, like is weird and evil. And like, we we're just like having a conversation about like me not thinking that that person was doing right by, you know, a lot of people like women and people of color and music by working with, you know, something or someone or whatever and i remember that person was like oh at least they pay me and we, it was like staying in like the really cheap shitty hotel and i was like but like is it worth it is it really that much if like you know if you, you know, yeah i don't know but that was about so the music industry like and i like yeah i don't want to be a part of it like we were invited to go to the arias and we didn't go because it's just really just like yeah like because how to no, socialize not even got, a reply how i don't know i can't remember that's like that's tomo replies to the emails but we just like we just didn't go <laughs> the mom of the group she's the mom yeah momo um yeah because that was nominated um and you just but didn't like that does go. yeah like that like i don't care what a bunch of fucking like white fucking executives think of my music it's not for them it doesn't matter like i don't care how popular it gets or how not popular it gets or awards or anything like that like it's for the people who listen to it who connect with it like that's kind of it and like like the music industry doesn't make me happy like i really like it doesn't do anything to my my soul like i don't like like even like like Matt, like even with like shows, like even after like playing, like I remember like we played the Sydney Opera House, like the main hall. And I just, I remember like walking off stage and just like f feeling like nothing. I was like, this doesn't make me feel good. This doesn't make me feel like a good person. But then when I like finish- That's such a huge show. I know, I know. But it, it's like, there's this brick wall like around my heart 
that the music industry like can't get through and like even like playing shows like can't get through like I feel my happiest when I'm like like with like my family or you know like just hanging out with like one friend or like finishing a day of like you know like vaccinating people or testing people or like you know working in like this like aged care job that I've got like that's when I feel the most happiness and it just yeah the music it just doesn't seem like it's just not worth it to me really I'm sorry I'm so yeah, grim all the time <laughs> no I think it's I think it's interesting because like again I think people often just see you go out on stage or you create something and you put it out there and people just think oh it's it's there for consumption and they don't actually really understand all these the inner turmoil that goes on in a creative mind and that's the whole point of this yeah like I feel like for a really long time my <clears throat> songwriting bake like like this is so like cliche but you know it was like it was an outlet you know it was like how I expressed myself to well like I'm like a genuinely like pretty like happy person i'm very fulfilled in my life like i've got like beautiful great fantastic people around me who love me and who i love and i love my job like i love you know being part of the front line against covid and like i also work in like an aged care facility for people who've experienced quite different hardships that me or you have will ever face and that makes me so happy and like like I love going to work like I'm always so happy to be at work like I'm always you know I like I you know I love being by myself and stuff like that and I feel like my out not like out you know maybe an outlet is like like my songwriting is how I get all the bad shit out so it's not in me so it's not brooding around and bubbling and that's how I get all the shit out but like recently in the last few years my songwriting hasn't been like as sad or as you know like heartbreak heartbreaking or angry because I'm not an angry or heartbroken person anymore like you know so what does the creative process feel like that you know compared to when you're writing a sad song to when you're writing a happy song do you feel that emotion in you when you're crafting it or i can't it just like i can't like i up? can't control what comes out like i don't like i never like go into something being like i'm gonna write about this like it never works that way like something will just come to me and i'll just kind of run with it and um yeah um yeah, I, I don't know. Like, I feel like because I'm, like, happier and calmer now, my songs are a bit happier and calmer and more about, like, liking myself and liking things around me and still being, like, furious about all the injustice in the world and, you know, fighting for what's right. And... Yeah, I think that maybe comes out in my songwriting now. Like, would you say you're a punk? Hell yeah. I go to like a punk show in like the fucking drains and <laughs> <laughs> the drains. Everyone is, you know, got their mohawks and their leather jackets and stuff. And I rock up with like a little white dress on and I'm the most punk person there. <laughs> No, I don't it's know. It's just like weird that punk is like because when you were obviously doing, yeah, it's whatever, it's whatever it is to you. Be. Punk, like you can't define punk. It is, it is what it is. I just like to some people, it's like an outfit or how they, you know, how they present themselves to the world and how that makes them feel, and that's punk as fuck. Punk is just like doing what you love, not hurting anyone. I don't think. No, I don't know. I was just about to go on like a little veganism rant. But veganism is also an incredible privilege. And I don't know. I think privileged hey, what do you people think about who aren't vegan, Like, 
It was depressing as fuck. <laughs> and like I Look, like I haven't seen it. I but can't my remember issue the issue with it. I can't remember the last time I ate anything are... that came from the sea. I can't remember the last time. And Yeah, I don't think I've ever seen you eat anything from the sea. No. And no one ever But will. like I guess <laughs> it's a secret. Um secret, but I yeah. guess like what I find interesting is that everyone already knew this information. I know, like, like this is, this, but like they tr- like you know these big fucking companies will try to distract us and put it onto the consumer rather than taking a look at themselves. Like people being like you know like and I used to be really like where's your fucking keep cup and your you know reusable or paper straw or whatever. And I it's like, like the sassy hand stuff. <laughs> I can't help, like, I'm a blogger, like, okay? Like, I use my hands to talk. <laughs> always have, always will. Um, but they put it on, like, you know, and I'm guilty of it, like, getting mad at people for, like, not using keep cup or not using metal straw or fucking whatever. But it's, like, that makes up the smallest fucking percentage of the plastic in the ocean. Like, everyone knows it's just discarded fishing nets that are just fucking everything. And it's, like, there's no, o- there's no ocean life. There's no, there's no life, you know, like... You know? What do you think is like you because you love docos? I do what do you love think docos. is the best documentary ever made? I was actually thinking, like, I like because you love your conspiracies. Hell yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> Who doesn't? Zeitgeist Who doesn't? is the best documentary ever made. <laughs> no, but I did watch that at 17 and it changed my whole life, it changed my perspective on the world. I was like. Everything around me is a fucking lie, and I kind of went a bit crazy. Um, I do like David Attenborough's documentaries. I do like how he kind of ends on kind of like a hopeful note. Um, I think some doc like have you seen Earthlings? No. It was like the original like vegan documentary voiced by Joaquin Phoenix. Um. Oh yeah, because he's a big animal activist. Yeah, eh? he's amazing. He like he's yeah. fucking beautiful. I like that he just like disappeared and came out with like a big beard and was like, I'm gonna make a rap album. <laughs> I feel like I kind of, I feel like that was like releasing Pleaser just out of the blue was kind of my Joaquin Phoenix moment. You, you did know? it. I did it. <laughs> you Joaquined everyone. Um, but yeah, like Earthlings, like I will never like I can't watch it. Cause, That's an animal one, though, isn't it? Yeah, it's about like the extreme violence. Because it sounds like aliens. Yeah, it's but... about human violence against animals for profit, pretty much. Like, I don't have, like, if someone wants to, like, go and fish or go and, like, get a bow and arrow and, like, kill a rabbit or something and eat it, like, that doesn't bother me. That doesn't bother me at all. I'm like, you do you. If you're, like, it's good that if you're gonna eat meat, you know where it comes from. You know, like you know how this thing died and how you know all that kind of stuff. I think that's very ethical. I'm like, you do you, rock on. But you know, factory farming and all that shit, training like living things, like fucking fucking objects, like. That and just, Earthlings just, would have been one of the first ones. Yeah, to no, sort that of was like the that, right? original fucking one. And there's some fucked stuff on it, like seeing like animals being skinned alive or people trying to kill a pig by just throwing a brick at its head constantly, like shit like that. And like, yeah, the worst like stuff. elephants like escaping like a circus and people just like shooting the fucking elephant. Like But like I don't get why like Seaspiracy is news to anyone. I know. Because, like, like we've in, all seen those clips. Yeah. Like, in a sense, made a I think it's good because it's being put in the mainstream and it's giving people something to think about. Like, being like if you're going to eat fish, like, this is what's, this is how much plastic's going to be in it. And this is what it's costing. And I think that people should know that. And also, like, like I'm not going to go and have a go at someone who, like, can't afford anything but, you know, like, meat. You know, like, because it is like, it's such a privilege to be vegan and to like, be like, be able to afford to live like this, you know, like. So when did you go vegan? 
Like I was a vegetarian from when I was 18. Like I was, you know, like I loved meat. You know, I loved eating meat. Every fucking meal. Whatever. When I was like a kid and a teenager. And I remember like first like watching, like I watched Earthlings, but then I continued to eat meat. Which was like fucked in a way, because that was me just like not caring. I was like, I know how it is, but I just don't care about it. And then I like grew up and over time I just felt more and more like guilty and weird and like thinking about what something is and where it came from. And so I've been properly vegan for like, I don't know, maybe like three or four years, three years. Was it like hard no. at, at first in each of those phases? Like I fluctuated between all of vegan a sudden and you vegetarian can't eat for a while. No, nah, you, can eat, you, can... you can eat fucking everything. Oh my God. Yeah, like, but when you first, when you first oh yeah, change, because like, that must rule everything out. Yeah, because like you grow up like thinking that like your plate has like this much meat and like this much vegetables, this much grains and fucking whatever. And you take away all these things. You're only, you're only left with this tiny bit, but you kind of have like a different relationship with food. Like, I feel like I've gotten like more experimental and like healthier and funner. And like, I've enjoyed making stuff and like learning about shit. Like there have been times in the last few years, like I went to like my grandparents' house and my bubble, like my grandpa gave me like a, a piece of cake. And I was like, oh, what's in it, blah, 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 blah. And he was like, olive oil, apples, flour, blah, 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 blah. And then I started eating it. And then he was like, oh, in the um, crumble, I put butter. And I was like, fucking hell, Papu. Oh, my God. Cause like <laughs> so then, close. <laughs> I know. I was so, I know. And there's so and many there good been, butter you know, substitutes. The, I know. And it's like, like, I've had like little times like that where I'm just like, fuck. Like. I just like I like went to this like Korean shop in Footscray and they had this like like make your own tofu kind of thing. So I bought that. I went home and I started like making it and then I like looked there was like a packet of like the coagulant. I looked on the back and it was like it had like, you know, some kind of milk, like skim milk powder or something in it or something. And I was like, fuck. <laughs> like there have been times like that, but it's like you know, I'm still doing my best. You know, that's all anyone can really do, you know? Yeah, I'm like, I, I'm not vego. I'm not vego by any stretch of the imagination, but mm. I consciously kind of eat maybe one meat meal a week. Yeah. Um, For no reason other than laziness, I must admit. But yeah. the goal is to reduce pressure on the meat industry. Yeah, that's, so that's it. So they don't that's have it. an excuse to factory farm. Yeah. Whether they do or not out of profit, but at least then I can turn around and say, well, I've contributed, you know, I could yeah. be better, but let's start there. And then, cause growing up, I only ever had a piece of well done steak yeah, same. and some peas that I would swallow like pills. Yeah. Like the vegetables <laughs> were the worst part. The meat was like the best part. Yeah. Like, no, yeah, I, was, exactly. I was exactly the same. And I remember my dad would try to like make tofu, like and he just flavor it so badly and it, it just tastes like shit. And so I had a really, I didn't like tofu for so long. Yeah, it's not I was a good so start. scarred by how my dad made it, which was awful. But I like fried tofu, but fine. I don't like um, like boiled tofu. Like, you know, when it's boiled like tofu. A brain. I like. Is that how you do it? No. I don't know. <laughs> just like make a tofu scramble, or just like crush it up with some garlic and onion and a bunch of flavors that you Can you, you show like. me a good. I think I'm meant to be in Melbourne next month. Oh! Well, end of the end of this month. Cool. Could you maybe show me how to make a good tofu? Yeah, let's do it. Come yeah, around. We'll I, have breakfast. And I'll show you how to um I'll show you how to st steam. <laughs> tofu. Thank you so much. You can show me how to grill a steak. <laughs> <laughs> the perfect trade-off. <laughs> um. All right. One of the common questions I got. Oh yeah, we was, haven't even been going um, through the questions. I want to know. We kind of have. I want to know what people have. asked. I want to know what people are interested well, in. There was one of the one of the common things is how do you know when a song's done? Like how do you know when something is finished and ready for like publishing? 
At on this SoundCloud. point, I try to give up because you don't finish a song; you just give up on it. You just abandon it, and you're like, "Ah, because it's gonna get." But like you know, like I like wrote a pop album over lockdown, and it, I'm still like working on it because it's still like, and I think that's like you got to know when to stop. Yeah, sometimes I don't, but ranges. like you know, it's good to like acknowledge that and like know that, but like. How I think, like, right now, like, I can see, like, that a song's done if it's got, like, if it's at, like, at, like, a, if it's at, like, three and a half minutes, four minutes, three minutes, and if it's, like, you know, it's got, like, little different sections of it and stuff, like, verses, chorus, all that kind of stuff. That's how I see that Do you worry about done. overlayering? Like, you know, because I uh, guess... No, I think I know like when to stop. And sometimes things sound fucking sick if there's just heaps of shit. Like, <laughs> you know. Just bongos, like everything's going yeah, on. Yeah, <laughs> like a bunch of different drum fucking tracks and stuff. Like, go for it. I love it. Like, you know, I think it's all case by case, really. Every song's its own yeah. unique little thing. And the other, the other common one was around uh, vulnerability of creating something. So um, it was kind of like, how do you get past that feeling of being a bit silly for creating something? I feel you like know? I kind of have like nothing to hide it. I'm not embarrassed by anything or any of my experiences. Like, you know, I got nothing to hide. But I guess there's I like see, a second I don't second see vulnerability bit. as a weakness. And, you know, that's... Everyone, like, everyone should think weakness. that, you know, it's not a weakness. It's a strength. It's like, you're being brave enough to be like, this is who I am. And that's like, really, that's really beautiful. I love it when people are vulnerable. I think it's, I think it's fucking beautiful. Um, was there a time when you started that you worried everyone around you was just telling you that you were great because, you know, they loved you so much. How do you know whether they just love you? or whether what you're creating can have value to a stranger. I don't know. I wish people, I wish like it didn't have to be like, I don't know. Sometimes I'm just like, I just wish that people could just like see like the music, you know, but also like, I don't at all. Cause it's like someone who's a complete piece of shit can write a great song, but that doesn't, you know, and that kind of ruins the song, but it's like, we can't be blind to that stuff either. Um, so I don't know, but no, like, I think I, just... I, I feel stupid putting photos out. Like every time I give you guys photos, I feel so ashamed. Oh my God. No. But you gotta I, like put that. I can't believe that you feel that way. Cause every time you send us photos, I'm like, fuck yeah. I'm not even thinking about like, <laughs> I'm not even thinking about like the, like the photo is like something that a photographer's done. I'm too focused on like, oh my God, look at my bum. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> you know, I'm too yeah, like, look at toy. like, that's what I'm thinking about, which is stupid. Um, yeah. It's just like, you see and all I the hope things that, like, and I, I guess. Yeah. I think that like art is a way for people to connect to each other and if someone like connects to a song and you know, you like you listen, we're listening to a song and we're thinking different things. We're applying it to our life and stuff like that. And it's the same with like photographs and art, like paintings and stuff like that. It like, it helps us feel connected to each other. And I think that's just so nice. And yeah, I think what I yeah. love about the music industry, if we're being positive about the music industry, is that it's a melting pot of all these different ingredients that, mm. you know, creates a delicious steamed tofu at the end. <laughs> I disagree. You know, like we're all... I hate the music industry. <laughs> well, I wouldn't know you if it wasn't for the music industry. Yeah, I know. I know. Do you still hate it? I think like, I, I know what you mean. Like, I just I don't think... like it that it's like a competition and it's like people trying to be famous and trying to capitalize. And does it feel like that at a band level? Like, not because, like, as like... a photographer, it feels like everyone's trying to compete, but it's like you're all crabs in a barrel. Like, we're all scraping for nothing. Yeah. You know, is that similar as a band? 
No, like, no, like, Camp Cope's just easy. We're just easy. We love each other. I know you guys are, but do you feel like that's a problem in the industry as a whole? I think, yeah, and I think that, like, awards and shit like that make it feel like more of a competition where it's like it's not a competition. Like, there's enough room for everyone. Like, there's enough room for everyone's art to, you know, be heard or seen or felt equally. And I think people forget that sometimes. Like, it's not a competition. It's just fucking art. Like, we're all just expressing ourselves and no one's better or worse than anyone else. Or no one's art has more or less value than anyone else. Like, and yeah, I understand like the putting value on it is how people like make money and how people live and stuff like that. And like, that's great. Like, rock on. Um, but I, I don't know. I just, I try to avoid that whole kind of side of it. I just, yeah, like, and you know, Tom is like the manager. Tom deals with everything and yeah. What's it like, you know, managing, I guess, you know, I know you can't speak for Tom, but what does it feel like to be on your own little raft? Well, and, I've never, you know, I've never known anything else. Never had a manager. No one's ever dared manage me. <laughs> No one has dared. <laughs> um, so it's kind of like all I've ever known. It's like. What do you think would be different if you got a traditional manager? Like, do you reckon you know. would be producing anything different or do you still. No, like, I'm not actually that sure. Because, like, at this point in my life, like, back, like, with like the old Camp Cope albums and stuff, like, I didn't kind of know what I wanted and I didn't know how to, like, fully realize my vision i didn't know how to make things sound better but after like time and lockdown and you know listening to lots of different kinds of music i'm now kind of more in tune with i know what i want and i know how to do it and i feel confident doing it because i know that i can do it well because i feel good about it and you think taking a solo think, like, like you know approach to stuff has really helped you sort of figure out because you have to kind of figure it out by yourself rather than yeah like i need to of... <clears throat> sorry i'm like a person that's like i need to like if someone puts their hand into a fire i'm not gonna learn that that fire is hot unless that's my hand which is the dumbest thing in the whole fucking world and i know this and it's something that i like i really need to work on about myself that about like I need to learn my own lessons instead of learning from other people's mistakes. Like I need to learn from my own mistakes, but I need to like, I feel like that in itself is a mistake a bit. I need to learn. Well, I put my hand in a toaster when I was five because I was like, if I've got one to seven and seven's crispy brown, mm -hmm. how hot is it? And so I just put my hand in the toaster and it's really hot. It actually made me scared of heat. <laughs> oh my life. God. Well, I don't, I'm so going to go to the toaster right now. I'm going to find out for myself. So fuck you, Matt. <laughs> Trust me on this one. This is a bit of um, yeah, an opportunity for you to learn from someone else. Yeah. Hot is hot. Um, and you guys, like one of the things, if you Google you guys, it, uh, you know, the, the laneway hotline stuff, which is something that laneway has put in after they sort of came up with it, but Kelly came up with it, not laneway. Kelly came up with it. That's something I that assumed me you off. guys collectively, I assumed you guys collectively came up with it. Like and Kelly came my up question, with it takes one. My question here reads, you are the band that is that knows it's okay to ask for more. What do those discussions look like with Laneway, et cetera, for the hotline? Thank you very much. Oh my God. Well, it I'm was giving like, you it guys was, credit. It was years ago, but like Kelly yeah, came but... up with it and like Kelly was like, no, we can't play a festival unless it's safe. And like that, you know, we were like fucking, yeah. Like how's it going to happen? How we, how do we do it? And Kelly just came to us with like this whole fucking vision about it takes one and the hotline and all that kind of stuff. And then Laneway, we had that conversation or like, you know, Kelly had that conversation with Laneway and they were super on board with it. And yeah, it happened. 
What it, the only thing that annoys me is that Callie didn't get the credit. And like that doesn't bother her, but it bothers me. Yeah. Because I'm like, Callie's the fucking, she's the fucking genius behind all this shit. She's fucking amazing. And yeah. Because I always thought it was you guys collectively, like the three of you. Oh, no, and it was. That's, I that's perceived Kelly. it to be like, if if you want us to play, then this is kind of what we need. Yeah, and that's I like. I found that really interesting. That's kind of what it kind of became. That became our standard. Like, if we're going to play this, it we need it to be safe and fun and fair for everyone coming in to watch it because ultimately it's like that's kind of like where the like where the reason that these people are here like we're responsible for them that's how i feel anyway and it's the most fucked feeling when something shit happens at your show like it's it it's so fucked up like it just makes you feel fucking awful and um luckily not much has happened at camp cope shows because we're very like vigilant and we've got our hotline and even though like you know it's just good to have it there you know so people know and you know it's like what i speak about on stage and um was it hard to set up like to set up the hotline oh laneway did it all and then at our own shows my you know like our friend beck um ta tall tattoos um yeah. she came on tour with us um and she works for a phone company. And so she got a number and linked it to her phone. And that was the number that we had everywhere at the show being like, if you feel unsafe or if you need anything, like go see back at the merch desk or call this number. And um, so yeah, it's, it's, a, it's just a big, it's a big collaboration really. Like, yeah, that's so good. Cause we kind of didn't really know how to do it first. We were like, should we just like get a burner phone or like, and then who's going to hold on to it? Who's going to answer the calls? Who's going to, you know, what are they going to do? Like if this, in these situations, like it was a very, it's a collaborative effort, you know, takes a village. And I guess the phone's rung a few times, right? Like surely it, it would have, even though like. Not really. Like, yeah, no, our shows, like people are very good at our shows to a point where it's like. People just stand there and I don't know if they're having fun. You know, like, I don't know. We're Raise not, your like, hand we're if not you're really a, a band time. to have fun to, you know, you know, put on camp. Well, not yet, but if the future songs are happy, yeah, they're maybe, different. maybe the, you are. They're more power, like, they're more like powerful and freeing. And so I think. Well, I just thought maybe, I just thought it would be inevitable that there would be a time someone would feel safe, whether there was action needed to be taken from that or not. You know, yeah. I guess maybe I'm just a little bit disappointed with some of the things that you hear. And oh, so, yeah, it's fucked. you know, like, I don't know, like, I'm sure you remember like a couple of like weeks ago or something at like a wax show, like, and something mm. happened. It's just like, that just broke my fucking heart. Like it, like, like you feel it because like every single woman that you know that i know has experienced like sexual assault or sexual violence or harassment like every fucking woman you know every woman that i fucking know every woman that, like the person on the street fucking knows like and you just feel it in like like <laughs> yeah you feel it because you've felt it before and you know mm. what it's like and it's horrible and it just breaks your heart like but, yeah and i guess like you know, you know must be especially hard as well that it's like you're you responsible for that you're responsible for yeah. that person being there and that person being there and and you want to take action but yeah. it's a show and no one's going to print you out a memo and bring it up on stage and say um, yeah. can you read this this has just happened yeah like it yeah yeah, that's tough. And we kind of, there's like, I can't change the past. Or, like, you know, we can try to like find the person who did it by going through the tickets and seeing what people looked like. And, you know, ultimately it's just like, there's nothing you can do except try to fucking prevent it by 
educating men. Literally yeah. just fucking educating men. That's why, like, when we play the face of God, I'm always like, I want every single man in this room tonight, once the show's over, to go and have a conversation with another man in your life about what you can do, about what you specifically and your mates can do to stop this from happening, to stop sexual violence, to stop rape, to stop assault, to stop murder. Because ultimately it's a men's issue. Like, it's not on us anymore. Like, it's never fucking, they tried to put it on us, but it's not our issue. Like, this is a men, like it's male violence. Like, that's what needs to be addressed. And men need to address it. And that's why I say fuck all men and I hate all men and whatever, like, you know, because no man is exempt from that. Like every man is responsible for dismantling the patriarchy, you know, and for, you know, being a feminist, you know, men should be fucking feminists because feminism is just like, we just want a level playing field, you know, between men and women. Do you think it's late? Do you think it's laziness that they don't have those conversations? I, or think, do you think, I think it's, it's people who are like, not all men. Because they're like detaching themselves, yeah, you know, and being like, "Oh, but that's not me." But like, I'm, I'm not like that. I'm a good guy, and it's like every fucking man probably thinks that, you know, it, you know, like we've got to be introspective and look at ourselves and look at our actions and you know, look at the things that we do and like just try to be better. That's kind of it. No. And do you think music has a responsibility in terms of like, if we look at all the creative arts and we look at, you know, um, I guess if we're using the weekend, right, his videos aren't very sort of overtly sexual and stuff. I haven't seen them all, so I can't be sure, mm. but that's not his brand. Whereas like, you know, sort of the, the objectification of women in, in men driven bands. Yeah. Do you think that's an issue or do you think I think you know... I think it's an issue. I think the song The Middle by Jimmy Eat World is an issue. You know, like I'm sure they wrote that a very long time ago when they were very young. Take but still time. I'm trying to run through the It's like it in goes like head. little girl and it's like that's a bit weird. That's a bit questionable to me. And like, yeah, it's a fucking bop, rock on. But like I just I can't I can't boogie to it, you know, like Cause it just kind of gives me the creeps a bit. Cause I'm like, ugh. So what are people meant to do with songs that uh, sort of cite problematic stuff? Like if we're looking at say, Hey, Hey, it's Saturday at the moment, that stuff's not in circulation anymore. Right. It's kind of like, it's been, it's done. But what about music when there's problematic lyrics that were accepted as culturally normal mm. at that time? I think what, you just what stop should... playing them. Like don't play them. Like, uh, we don't play Footscray Station anymore because a bit in the second verse is really, like, I wrote it and it's really girl hatey. I was hating on the other girl. I wasn't hating on the guy. Whereas it wasn't the girl's fault. You know, that was just me, y y you know, being, like, having, like, internalised misogyny and, like, the last... When people ask us to play it, I'm like... No, I don't play anymore and this is why. Because I feel like I was being a misogynist. And I'm like I'm I'm not like that anymore and I don't want to you know I don't you know. Do you write well I guess like it's interesting because you know it's I guess it takes a, a big person to see that as well because I think a lot of I think a big issue, I guess, when I have these discussions with other guys is that they think everything's such an extreme case. Like, yeah. oh, well, women can't do anything wrong by women uh, and only men can do things wrong by women oh, and all these really... cases are really extreme and it undermines the discussion that you have, whereas, it's just, hey, man, it's just a chat. Like, you know, have you a know think what's about like, it. Like, what's really weird is that, like, women a bit are seen as like dramatic and emotional and you know all this kind of shit and all we get our periods and blah 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 but it's like men do this fucking thing where they just generalize everything and they push everything to the extreme like and it's like like when you're like 
hey, like, could you not say that one thing? And they'll be like, well, I guess I'm never gonna talk ever again. And blah, 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 blah. <laughs> like men are so dramatic. And it's like, chill out, bud. Like, let's just like have an adult conversation about this. Like not every, like, you know, uh, men are so Yeah, I know dramatic. it just feels like there's these touch points in those conversations that immediately get people on the back foot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they're they're worried about the triggers more than they're actually triggered because if they just patiently waited for the conversation to evolve as it is, they'd probably find that they're not actually triggered. Yeah. like. But they're like, whoa, man, not this topic, not this topic, you know. Yeah, and it's like, well, why don't you want to, you know. I don't know. I just, it just doesn't seem very rational to me. So how many lyrics do you reckon hit the cutting room floor because you needed to purge something out um, compared to? Well, I guess like Footscray stations, like we don't play that anymore. Like um, when I was like 16, I had a, I wrote like a song for my music class and it was a, like, there was a verse that was about like going to like a, like a gay marriage rally and like walking next to like, and I said transvestite and I'm like, that is not okay to say now. That is not the word that we use now. Like that's very old school and outdated. And I wrote it when I was 16, 17, it's like 10, nine, 10 years ago. And so I like, you know, I obviously don't play that cause I'm like, that was not, that wasn't the right thing to say. But like, yeah, I just, like, I just didn't, I just didn't know. Like, you know, I'd watch like the Rock Hero Picture Show, you know, when I was a teenager. And so I thought that that was the right word to use. And yeah. But can't you just change that one bit? Or do you think the DNA of the song is tainted sort of thing? uh, Yeah. uh, Or it's just not that important to... It's just not that, I guess, not that important to me. Like, it doesn't, like, it doesn't feel necessary anymore. Like, you know, and like, same with What's Grace Station. I just don't like that song. I'm just like, I'm bored of it. Yeah. You know? So I do like I do like how anything. like like I remember like one of the times that we'll play we we're playing it and there's a there's a line that's like and there's blood on Scott Morrison's hands and there's a rally in the city if you want to meet there. I just remember being like, there's blood on Scott Morrison's hands and there's blood on Scott Morrison's hands, that motherfucker. Um, that was fun. There's a Could... punk in you coming out. <laughs> yeah, like I'm I'm a punk in my soul. I also just love I love punks. Like I genuinely love punks. And it goes back to when I, I think I was like four years old. And because my dad, like my dad was really fucking weird. Like when I was four, he took me to like a drug rehab clinic where his, my uncle was, cause he was an intravenous drug user. And mm. I remember like waiting in like the waiting room. And I remember seeing uh, like a man in like a, like a leather jacket with studs and patches and like a big colorful mohawk. I just remember just like staring at him being like, like, I think that I was like, I was four years old and I was like in love. Like I was like, oh my God, this person looks so weird. I just loved it. I fucking loved it. And I just Do you think never, it's like the story that. behind it? You're like, you I know, don't know. I just... think I just like it. Cause it's like, it's different. Like, and it like, it's like, it's cool. Like, I love punk. Like, I love punks. I love the way that they dress. I love the music. Like, I love the show. So is like punk a big genre of yours that you listen to? Like, is that one of them? Because nah. one of the other questions we got a lot of is, <laughs> nah. <laughs> I like going other- to punk shows. Like, I wouldn't sit down and listen to like a punk, you know, album. You have some punk vinyl. I've seen some I of your vinyl collection. Vinyl. You got some punk vinyl, man. Yeah, I know. But like, I don't like listen to it. Like I used to like listen, like, I know I I used to like try to like listen to like hardcore music and stuff and, you know, pretend to like it when really I'm just like, I just want to listen to fucking pop music. I just want to listen to pop music. So what's the most, I guess, pop being the the biggest inspiration you draw thing from Mm -hmm. what's the, I guess, pop spans so many generations. What's the key generation that you think has the the most bops in pop i think like right now it's incredible 
Like Lady Gaga's really? album Chromatica is amazing. Oh, Rain On Me's um, chorus. That's not even the so best song good. on the album. It's just it's just full <laughs> of club bangers. Like it's so fucking good. Like I listen to it at the gym. Like it's incredible. It's such. Have a you good heard album. Veronica's new song? No, the last song I heard of no, theirs I was either. um. How we get so ugly? Oh my god! Oh, <laughs> I saw Ben Lee is one of my best friends. Oh yeah. We met on Saturday, and he's now one of my best friends. I've just oh, decided. hang on. Okay, the back the backstory was I hit up Georgia last week, and I said, "Hey, you want to come on the podcast?" I just got a yes reply, and then nothing for a few days. And I'm like, <laughs> "Oh, I should get back to me eventually." And then uh, the next message is Ben Lee's my best friend now. <laughs> well, Ben Lee is like, my best friend now. Yeah, His I just I just thought it was I brewing just... for longer than oh my just God. Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've been Instagram friends for like six months. And then on Saturday, he was in okay. Melbourne and like hung out with him and his daughter and his family and then like went to a show, got so drunk and just had the best night of my whole life and danced heaps. And I loved watching Ben Lee. It was so beautiful. I loved He's got him. fun music. He does. I just, I like him as a person. Like he's fucking lovely. Like he's awesome. Like... His stepdaughter was saying that, like, he used to be in, like, a bunch of cults and stuff. And I'm like, rock on, Ben Lee. What? I know. I was like, oh, my God, that's sick. I love people who've had, like, interesting, weird lives. Like, it's just so cool to me. And, like, I just, I really like Ben Lee. And, like, I just, I think he's such a lovely person. And he's, like, always, like, learning and being fucking, like, he's just a good fucking person. I love it. Would him. you agree? And that makes that... his music so much better. Like when someone's a good person. Oh, it really like, does. You listen to their music and you're like, yes! <laughs> Is there anyone that you've met that has been a dud person and you've been really disappointed that you can't listen to their music anymore? I'm not going to You name, don't have to say I'm who. I'm not going to like. No, but like. But like, yeah, like that's happened. That's happened like plenty of times. That's why I don't like want to be involved in the music industry. I don't want to meet these people. I just want to enjoy that. Like, I just want to enjoy the music and like, fuck off, you know? Some bands I feel scared to meet them because I'm like, oh, if I if I don't like it, I know, like them, I know. Then... And like, what if they're like rude to me? But like, what if it's just That's like, scary. you know? But what if it's like, oh, they've just had a bad day and they can't be bothered meeting some fucking random idiot, like you know, like me being the random idiot. Um, <laughs> it's like you can't judge a person on that. One of the questions I got was, do you enjoy meeting fans? Because they said that they met you once at a show and you didn't seem that keen to have the discussion. Um, are you just a shy person? Yes or no? Um, I don't think I'm a shy. Like, sometimes I'm a shy person. Like, I also just don't like meeting people at shows because, you know, like, it's, like, I'm not, like, at my happiest when I'm at a show. You know, like, it's just like, it's not, it's just like, it's sometimes it's like really stressful. Like, you know, like I like, I don't really go to shows all that much. Like, I don't like, I like going to like. So it's all, not just when like it's your punk show. Shows. I like going to punk shows. And I like going to see my best friend, Ben Lee. And, <laughs> you know, I'll like go watch my friend play at like a, like the, the tramway or something. But like. My own shows, like, I'm just too in my head about everything and I just can't be bothered. And, like, you know, sometimes people, like, sometimes people will say kind of, like, invasive or inappropriate things to me. And, and like, you know, to, like, Kelly and Tomo and, like, you know, everyone. And it just makes me kind of, like, take kind of, like, a step back sometimes. But, like, sometimes I've, like, met people and we've, like, cried together or they've told me something that's made me cry or, like, you know, someone has, like, this really strange, like, connection to me and we, like, talk about it. And, like, you know, sometimes it's, like, super beautiful. And other times I'm just, like, I just, I can't have a conversation with anyone right now. Like, I just, I can't do it. And, like, you know, like... A lot of, like, shows in the past, like, you know, like, just because there's a show happening doesn't mean there's, like, other shit, like, not going on in your life that's, like, 
playing on your mind, you know? And like, that's like, no, if I was like rude to someone, like I feel so bad about, like, I feel really like, cause like, I, I don't know. Sometimes I can be really like, sometimes I can be rude, like, and I don't realize it. And cause I'm like, you know, like I'm a, I'm a bit like, I'm a bit funny, you know, I'm a bit of a funny person, like not in like a ha ha, she's so funny way, but in a, in a way like that's a like, person. you're a fucking alien. Like, <laughs> and sometimes I'll be rude to people without even like realizing that I'm rude. And then someone will be like, you were just really rude. And I was like, oh my fucking God. Oh my God. I feel so bad. Like blah, 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 blah. And I'll like freak out about it. Um, well, I like, I'm one tenth, obviously, you know, not, not even that of, of your guys sort of fame, but on the very odd time, someone comes up to me, there's probably a 50% chance that I then overthink, have I said enough to them? I, d I don't know what to say. They weren't particularly talkative. Uh, like, you yeah, know, no, like I, feel I that tried way to well. drive the convo, but I didn't start it. Yeah. And like, sometimes I like, I I just can't, yeah, sometimes I just can't be fucked having a conversation, like, and, like, sometimes it's stressful because it's, like, this person's going to remember this if they really, like, put you on, like, a pedestal or think that you're some way because of the songs and you don't live up to that. Like, that's really stressful as well. Like, mm. I don't know, Reese, like, more, like, recently I've tried, like, well, not like recently. We haven't played a fucking show and I can't even remember how long. But like, you know, like someone came up to me on Saturday night at the Ben Lee show. Ben Lee, my best friend. Um, <laughs> and they're like, oh my I God, want a collaboration. Gonna it's going to happen. I'm going to write, an I want to write an album with them. I just think we'd make some good songs. Um, but like someone came up to me and they were like, oh my God, like love camp, camp, blah, 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 blah. and I was like, oh my God, what is that? And they were telling me about how they, you know, missed out on tickets to the show. And I was like, oh, I'll put you on the door. Cause I was, you know, I was drunk, but, and I wanted to be like nice. And I wanted them to think that I was nice. <laughs> so I was like, I'll put you on the door. Let me put you on the door. How many guests must you want? And, um, yeah, I don't know. So it's like interactions with people just stress me out in general, maybe. Yeah, because you want to be like a good person. I know. I just really want to be a good person. I'm so scared that I'm not. No, you're a great person. No, don't tell me that because then I'll... You're a horrible person. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you so much. You're as the worst you. person I know, Georgia. <laughs> as a you. And oh, thank you. Ditto. Thank you. Hate but like, you, you know, you know what I mean? Voice. Like I always, I'm yeah. always just like striving to be better. I'm like, I can't think that I'm good because then I can't be better, you know? So I'm always trying to be yeah, better. I know and I'm mean. always making mistakes. I'm always fucking up. But I'm, I like to think that I'm always learning from it, you know? Yeah. Two, two more questions, right? Yeah. Let's bring this home. What do you do when, this is from uh, someone called Reese Bubbles. Oh, cool. <laughs> Yeah, Reese Bubbles. Cool. Reese Bubbles asked, um, you know, what do you do when you've you've put your thing down, I guess, post-COVID? I don't know. You've obviously written a, another pop album, you said, or writing one. But what do you do when you want to pick something back up that, you know, maybe you're a painter. You're like, okay, I'm not feeling that anymore. You put it down for a year. How do you tap back into that in the quickest possible way? Is it just a matter of just doing it? Uh, you got to do it to do it, you know, like... And like, it's good to like leave things for a while. Cause then like you come back to it and you're in a different state of mind. You might see things a bit differently. Like I've had this like song that like, I just had written um, a, like a verse of a song. I didn't know what to fucking do with it. And then I like played it to one of my friends like a year after I'd written it. And she was like, that's so cool. And I was like, oh my God, it actually is really cool. Let's, I'm going to try to write a second verse. And then I tried to write a second verse. And did you? Yes. And then I finished the song. And it's really cool. Hey. Um, but yeah, you got to just like pick it up and try again. And if you're not like sold on something, just fucking get rid of it. Like who cares? Or like copy and paste it somewhere else and use it for another thing. Like, you know, like like for the, like this song that I'd like put down and picked up a year, a year later, I had this like 
this these like lyrics that I'd had initially started to like write like you know write and I was just like I'll just put them into fucking this song and it just sound it fit fucking perfectly and it worked and um yeah just keep so it finds a new home yeah just like I don't know I try not to get too stuck on like try not to get too stuck on things if it doesn't work doesn't work just like leave it come back to it whenever like who cares like it doesn't matter like one song's not the fucking be all and end all you know all right, final question. We always ended with the same one is who do you think would be a good guest to tell their creative story on a future app? Nominate someone. This isn't the ASL, a, ALS ice bucket challenge, but Ben Lee. The next most. <laughs> ben Lee. All right, we'll keep the friendship hot and then maybe you can. Ben come Lee on. is my best friend. <laughs> like, you I have know, you to get him on here. That. Like, I want, I just want to know more Talk about to him. He's friend. so cool and interesting. Talk I will. to your best friend about it. I'll be like, oi, go on this podcast that my friend Matt runs. Yeah. Be episode three. <laughs> yeah, do it. Oh, is this only the second episode? And you yep. talked to Jake Lederman last time. Talked to Jake last episode. Who did Jake um, nominate? Was... Well, this is the the worst thing. I said we always end with the same episode, but that's some of that wishful thinking because I forgot to ask that. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> that's okay. Like, And now you'll never forget it probably maybe. I don't know. Yeah, you know, I ended with the take sides with Jake actually. Oh. Uh, what and I asked, I asked him, um, you know, waiting for creativity to strike or working to be creative. I say wait for it to strike, but also like you can like work at shit, you know, and maybe it's just because I'm lazy with it. Like I don't really, I don't know. I don't. Care well, CR, CRB NRV asked, take sides, peanuts, or cashews? Cashews. Yeah, I'm with you on that one. I like salted, salted or unsalted? Cash- salted. Yummy. And you can do, like, cashews yeah. are so versatile. Like, I use them to make, like, sauce all the time. That you can just, like, put, like, hot water in cashews, leave it for a little bit, and then blend it up with, like, a bunch of flavors that you like. And it's this beautiful, like, creamy sauce. The thing I don't like about it is it looks like fingernails. Oh. Don't you reckon? Yummy, yummy fingernails. Because the way that they, the way that they curl. <laughs> That's fine. That doesn't like. I've never been bothered by that. I love a well, cashew. I hope you're not going to be bothered now. A cashew. No, I like I that. Be. A cashew is like two nuts in one too. Because when you eat it, really, they're two side by side in the yeah. same curl. Have it's you noticed cool. that? It's weird. Like, how do they grow? Like, where do they? Where do you get? Ca- is there like a cashew? Tr- I actually don't know. <laughs> Like, do where do cashews right come now? from? Yeah. Should we end with a bit of knowledge? Yeah, like, where do cashews uh, come from? Like, <laughs> where like do, do they cashews... grow in the ground? Do they grow on a well, tree? people have searched cashew for it. tree? Oh, this is interesting. Cashews come from a tropical tree formerly known as an Arcadium occidentally cool. or something. The tree produces a fleshy pear-shaped stalk. Uh, called a cashew apple on its branches, yet the part of the plant is not the fruit. So I guess this definition well, tells us everything that a cashew it isn't. <laughs> what is it then? Where does it come from? <laughs> so they do look like bell peppers. Cool. Maybe they're related. Um, and, oh, you know how it says people ask? Yes. Um, the second the second most popular question on people almost ask, are cashews edible? They no. very much are. I can answer. That for you. I love. That's well, there's so some YouTube. Weird. There's some YouTube mini documentaries here. I want to look at like the harvesting of a cashew. And It'd also, like when you like fall down, like if you're in an elevator and it's falling, how do you survive? Do you jump? I would jump, but do you reckon we would be like you know, You'd know our exactly reflexes when would to be do quick it. enough? And like, what if like you jump too early? Like, yeah, you wouldn't know where the end is. What happens? How does gravity work? I know that it falls I, at 10 meters per second per second. I think I would just freak out and grab the barrier. Like yeah. Like a Disney ride. Yeah. I'd try to like, like I, don't, I don't fucking know. I'd like lie down or something. I'd just lie down and accept my fate. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a lot of- <laughs> Just you just calmly laying, like yeah. planking on the ground. I'd call my mom and tell her that I love her. 
Everyone's like, is she just planking right now? We're gonna die. I'd be planking up face first, face down on the ground, like a plank. Oh, last year I meant to bring back the plank, but I didn't. I thought well, about it. You know, that COVID got in the way. I know my twenty. Okay, twenty twenty one. I'm bringing back the plank, Matt. I need to go because I need to pee, and no one's gonna listen to a podcast that goes for an hour and a half. Well, we'll see. We'll, we'll see. see. But I really appreciate you being on it. You're a legend. I love you very much. I love much. you so and much. Thank I you so can't much for wait having to, me. Um, I can't wait to see you in person, in the flesh. Oh, and you can no. show me how to... Um, Make a Show me scramble. how to... Yeah, tofu scramble and I'll show you how to steam it. <laughs> steam some tofu. I love it. It's perfect. I even call it steam a tofu. That steam shows you how little I know. one single tofu. All right. Love yeah. you so much. Thank okay. you for having me. Love you, buddy. Bye. Speak to you soon. Bye.